So I'm sure a lot of you have been interested to see how our air to air heat pump system coped over the recent cold spell in January. So I'm going to show you all that plus a bunch of other statistics, but here's a quick reminder of our system. We have a 6.8 kilowatt peak array split east and west, so 3.4 kilowatt peak on each side, going into a Give Energy battery system with a combined capacity of 14.7 kilowatt hours, so a 9.5 and a 5.2 kilowatt hour battery combined. And those are both going into a Gen 2 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter. We also have a Toshiba air to air heat pump system that runs our heating in the winter and cooling in the summer. And finally, we have a Mixergy IHP integrated heat pump cylinder that runs our hot water. And Cat also has an EV, which is a currently a Fiat 500E. So I thought I'd just start with this interesting chart showing the uh, heating load in kilowatt hours. Uh, that our air to air heat pump system required in comparison to the average daily temperature where we are in Gloucestershire. So this is the average temperature um, across the, the, the whole 24 hour period. So it's not the min or the max, it's the, the average um, throughout the day. And you can see that um, typically when the uh, temperature drops, the heating demand goes up as you'd expect. And when the temperature increases, the heating load uh, drops down a bit. And in fact, the um, one of the colder days, uh, you can see it dropped below zero here. So I've tried to get the zero line lined up for both uh, the heating load on the left hand side here and the um, average temperature on the right hand side there. Um, so you can see any time that the orange blobs drop below zero, this is a zero average temperature. You can see we had a, this is, this is sort of the cold spell here. Um, and it was pretty cold generally across the whole of January, certainly colder than the average um, that you'd expect for the time of year. But in particular, these two days here, are very, very cold. Um, and you can see actually that um, uh, the, the, the load gradually increased over an, a few days and then we got this big spike up to nearly 50 kilowatt hours on uh, the 11th there and um, the reason that that's so much higher than these previous few days is that actually we had my parents come to stay for a couple of days and I deliberately kept the house a little bit warmer than we would ordinarily have uh, if it was just cat and I in the house um, so that's why this is probably a, a few kilowatt hours more than than we would expect given um, the usual conditions, shall we say. So uh, that's uh, um, quite an unusual occurrence uh, and that isn't really a normal a normal uh, load for us. Um, but yeah, you can see even so it got up to um, 40 plus on this uh, this period where it was below zero for you know, three or four days in a row. Um, and uh, But otherwise the rest of the, the uh, month, um, it was more like 23, 24, something like that for the rest of the uh, the rest of the month and the temperature was varying between sort of well two degrees um, just over uh, one and a half to two degrees up to uh, seven or eight degrees um, so yeah that's um, the typical pattern that we see and in total you can see that we actually consumed a 816.3 kilowatt hours in January which is way above what we would normally expect based on the modeling I did um, a couple of years ago. Now I know for a fact now um, that this uh, blue line, this blue shaded area is definitely uh, lower than it should be because we're using this new strategy of heating overnight which obviously uses a bit more energy but uh, it actually reduces the total cost because we're um, doing more of our heating during the octopus go off peak period at 8.5 pence per kilowatt hour. Um, which means also that our batteries last a bit longer so we're using less peak power so uh, yeah i'll show you later that in fact our um our cost for the heating is going down despite the fact that we're actually using more total kilowatt hours and therefore also keeping the house a little bit warmer in fact which is uh, um, two benefits which is excellent um, but yeah you can see this is way higher than it was um, last year certainly way higher than the uh, the expected line and the plus sta one standard deviation line here um, in reality so I've started to rebuild this model for the current strategy and um, although I uh, I need to gather data for the remaining few months, so February, March and April really, before I can properly show you the results of that model. Um, at the moment it's looking like, generally speaking, we're 10 to 20% higher uh, in terms of our expected uh, consumption. So this line here should be um, a bit further up around about this sort of level, uh, closer to 700 and something uh, kilowatt hours. And uh, in fact the, uh, the 816 kilowatt hours that we did use is above the expected but it's not like it doesn't look crazy compared to uh, the way it does in this particular chart here um, but yeah I thought that was interesting I'll certainly have much more to show you once we hit sort of March April time I'll have a, I'll have the complete model and I'll show you how I built that model and what it all means but uh, yeah and just to show you our consumption in a slightly different way uh, this is our um, off-peak and peak import split into the different colors here so our off-peak import 
in kilowatt hours uh, in blue and the peak import in yellow. So you can see um, over the course of uh, October, we basically didn't use any peak import at all. Then we started to get a few kilowatt hours here and there of peak imports during the um, um, November and December. And then in January, this is the cold spell here where we used a big chunk of, uh, of peak import. Uh, but it's not uh, as bad as it looks. If you compare it to um, last winter, this is what uh, you can see. So um, in red is the winter for 2023 to 2024. And we used a total of nearly 600 hours, uh, kilowatt hours of peak import um, and that's all that red bars here and then um, basically I stopped the data at the end of March 2024 and then I started again and show uh, from October 2024 onwards in yellow and you can see that um, generally speaking it's been a lot, a lot lower peak imports. This is that big spike uh, on that one particular day where you actually used 28.4 kilowatt hours of uh, peak import for that one day when my parents were around and I had the heating on uh, extra and it was super cold outside um, but you can see in total so far we've only used 328 kilowatt hours of peak import compared to uh, basically best part of 600 last year and you can see in fact from uh, the end of January onwards last uh, last winter we didn't really use any peak imports and I'm expecting a similar sort of pattern um, for the rest of, of this winter. So uh, I'm pretty sure this isn't going to climb significantly higher than sort of 330, 340 kilowatt hours of peak import. So you can see our strategy is working extremely well. We're definitely using significantly less in terms of uh, peak uh, uh, import than we did uh, at the same time last winter. So what does that mean in terms of how much it cost us to run our air-to-air -air heat pump system for January? Well, um, I've got the numbers and I can tell you that we averaged about 11.21 pence per kilowatt hour for the heating and uh, that gave us a total of 91 pounds and 52 pence. And if we were to use uh, gas instead of our air-to-air -air heat pump system, then I estimate that that would have cost us roughly 151 pounds instead. So um, yeah, about 60 pounds uh, less using our air-to-air -air heat pump system compared to gas and that's uh, because obviously we've got the the battery in the solar system which helps us to run a good chunk of this using off-peak as I showed um, and uh, so it means that we're um, definitely saving money in, when we're running our air-to-air -air heat pump system uh, compared to running on gas. So I've spoken about the heating consumption but what about the rest of it and you can see that uh, in fact uh, January's consumption was pretty high so what I'm going to do I'm just going to turn my face off because you can't see the January chart there so let me turn that off. Um, yep yeah, so very interestingly uh, we actually used almost exactly the same total consumption this January uh, 1250 kilowatt hours that's 1.25 megawatt hours uh, almost exactly the same as January last year 1.25 four megawatt hours, 1,254 kilowatt hours, um, which is uh, interesting because we used significantly more heating, obviously, uh, as I described before, 816.3 kilowatt hours this uh, January compared to 644.7 last January. Um, but uh, our hot water consumption was significantly lower this, uh, this January, 72.8 kilowatt hours versus 172.2 kilowatt hours last January and that's because last year we were using the immersion heater in our cylinder um, whereas obviously this year we have the mixed G IHP integrated heat pump cylinder which uh, means that we need much less energy for heating our hot water. Uh, some other slight small differences we use a little bit less EV um, this January compared to last January. This January was nearly 90 kilowatt hours last January was 122.6 we haven't used the um, dehumidifiers at all this January, so that's basically zero, whereas last January it was about 16.6 kilowatt hours, I think that is. Um, the tower rails, 13.6 this January, 15.8 last January, basically the same. And uh, the remainder, interestingly, is a little bit lower. I guess we were just a little bit more frugal with our daily usage of uh, energy, so 257 kilowatt hours um, this January compared to 282 kilowatt hours last January. I'm back in the corner. So uh, this is the generation from our solar array. Um, obviously, I've added a, a new uh, set of uh, bars here for 2025 um, in purple. I might change the, the colors. Um, I'm not completely happy with the, uh, the colors I've got here. So I might do a bit of tinkering with that. But for now, this will do. Um, so obviously, uh, 2023 is the orange bars. 2024 are the green bars. And now we've got 2025 in the purple there. And you can see we generated 120 kilowatt hours uh, this January, which isn't too bad actually. It's slightly above the expected line here. Um, actually last January, 
we generated um, 128, so not too dissimilar. Uh, certainly a lot better than we did in uh, December uh, last, <laughs> uh, the last December gone, uh, 69 kilowatt hours there, which is way below expectation. So hopefully this is a sign of um, some improved weather and we'll uh, get a little bit more generation throughout the rest of the winter and into spring, which will certainly help us um, reduce our peak imports, hopefully to zero if possible. Um, but yeah, uh, we shall see what the spring brings. And I want to finish up, as always, with the money charts. And uh, this is the one I started to show last month. Um, you can see th this is the annual rolling bill. So basically the last full 12 months of bill uh, with and without uh, DFS. That's the uh, Demand Flexibility Service. I'm going to basically stop uh, referring to um, the bill with the DFS. I think it's more or less meaningless now um, because it's uh, so bad and we basically not doing... I mean, we're not taking part this winter. It's, uh, it's almost not worth our while at all. So let's uh, let's say without the DFS, um, you can see we've got this steady decline. Um, and last uh, uh, last month, I gave our annual roundup for 2024, and I revealed our annual bill was 276 pounds and 25 pence, which I was pretty pleased with. But it's continued to fall a little bit. We're now down to 259 pounds and 85 pence, um, and I think that's because we've basically got um, we're continuing obviously with our strategy of overnight heating, which is reducing our average unit consumption. We're using less peak power, obviously, as I described earlier. And the fact that we our total consumption is also reducing a little bit because of our uh, the Mixer G IHP, which is helping a little bit as well. Um, so yeah, overall, um, I don't know how much lower this is going to get. Um, I guess we'll find out in the spring. But this is the breakdown. And you can see, once again, my, uh, my head is slightly in the way. So let me just turn that off briefly. Um, you can see now that our um, savings for this month, um, I estimate to be about 154 uh, pounds. Yeah, 154 pounds 57. So our actual bill was 150 pounds 46, uh, interestingly. And the equivalent cost, if we had and um, if we used gas for our central heating and our hot water and if we still had a petrol car instead of cats ev um then our uh, and we if we didn't have the battery or the solar then i estimate our equivalent cost would have been 309 pounds so that's including petrol gas and the electric um at the standard rate um but uh, obviously we were able to get our um, bill down to 154 pounds giving us a total saving which is the difference between those two of 154 pounds as well um, so there we go uh, I'm just going to turn myself back on briefly and that's continuing to give us um, an annual estimated saving of about 1930 odd pounds and the uh, annual bill as I showed um, rolling annual 12 month bill of 259 pounds 85 so I'm ignoring this January so this is ju it's just the, the, the these numbers here are the the totals for the 12 months the most recent 12 months so ignoring this one I show last January just as a reference um, uh, just so you can see how it compares to this January uh, no no DFS uh, obviously to speak of at all in um, January um, and haven't really had any for, for several months so that's basically becoming negligible so there you go, our air-to-air -air heat pump system coped just fine over the cold snap. No problems whatsoever, the house was perfectly comfortable and just as warm as it has been uh, when there hasn't been a cold snap. So yeah, no complaints from us. So uh, a lot of people have been asking me since my last video, uh, going through all of these stats, what the install cost and all that other stuff and the payback and everything else. Um, I'm actually planning on doing a, uh, a more detailed video on that at some point in the future. So uh, um, yeah, please don't ask again. I will have a video covering all of that uh, coming up at some point soon. So um, all the details will be forthcoming. Um, but otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next one.